Hi everyone, it's Raina. So I said in my astrological video about the eclipse that I was going to do a spread on it. It's not going to be a, I gotta get that wrinkle. <laughs> it's not going to be like a regular um, spread. I'm just going to pick like four cards on top about the ener energies around it and four cards on the bottom. So that adds up to eight. And that is the universal, uh, th that's the universal year in numerology. We have an eight. And see what the, the, the bottom four can be about, like, what it means, what it can manifest. And I'm going to also pick two sacred geometry, geometry cards to flank it out. So I'm using the Wild Unknown Tarot. I was drawn to use that for some reason. So far I've got two. This is for the energy right now around this eclipse. I got two major arcana cards. Wow. Three major arcana cards and one of them is actually the magician which is connected to aries whoa 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 and actually Aries, even though the magician isn't the first card because the fool is the first card it is numbered one and the world card is the last card of the major arcana 21. Ooh, kind of like little chills or goosebumps Remember, too, that this is occurring. Oh, there's the full card. Oh, you know what I just realized? All these are major arcana cards. And I'm, I'm, um, you know, I'm, uh, um, you know, these, these were already shuffled. And I, and I also shuffled them as I pulled them. They weren't, like, in order or anything. So three out of the four outcome cards are... Uh, you know, major arcana cards, which uh, means that they indicate major happenings. You know, the minor arcana are like day-to-day -day kind of normal events. So this is my, I forgot the name of this. I don't have the box in front of me. It's a new deck. It's a sac sacred geometry. I wanted to show the back because sometimes people like, I, I know I like the back. Okay. Oh, wow. I got the divine masculine. And I also got the father of wands, which is the king of wands. I always... Think of that as the divine masculine and transition certainly we know <laughs> that eclipse energy is transitional okay let's look at the top four which is the en energy surrounding this eclipse the first card is the empress this is a card connected to venus and the two uh signs are ruled by venus taurus and libra interestingly both of these signs have been touched by eclipses taurus last fall uh ended the eclipse cycle between it and its opposite sign of scorpio so in uh, on october 28th was the last uh eclipse in scorpio lunar eclipse at five degrees of scorpio which by the way was the degree that jupiter went direct on december 30th and Jupiter is still in Taurus at the moment and will form a conjunction, an alignment with Uranus on the 20th, but it's actually in play during this whole time frame. So the Empress is about cre creativity. It's about prosperity and love. And, you know, there is some, uh, this is, um, you know, astrological too, that there's a lot of good energy, or even this year as a whole, being an eight year for money, um, regardless of what people have been experiencing thus far. You know, because we have, when we have this eclipse in Aries, we will have completed over one fourth of the year. So that that one quarter is certainly not the whole of 
2024. So you could look at it like the best is yet to come, but there might be something here and whether this is for the collective, I mean, obviously I'm reading this for the collective, but it might be that you find in your own personal life that you somehow are prosperous. Um, we have to look beyond the 8th of April or if it's in where you live on the 9th, because it's really, um, you may be feeling it right now. I know I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, it's almost like a breathless feeling, but um, in terms of the effects it could play out beyond even the month of April. So we have to, we have to realize that and not be like just stuck on that one date. Empress is about love. It has this, I mean, because it's connected to Venus, we could say that it has a harmonious vibe to it versus the Martian energy that is associated with, Aries being ruled by Mars, the god of war. And uh, so I think that what that says to me is that people can find peace in the midst of great upheaval and even in some cases feeling like things are very dicey, um, you know, in different ways. The father of wands is the king of wands. This is about sovereignty. This is about stepping into your power. You see that lightning bolt. To me, that suggests the person who, um, it, even that electrical energy, and I would even tie it to the, that alignment between um, Jupiter and Uranus. Uranus is uh, the, the symbol of Aquarius because Uranus rules Aqu uh, Aquarius. I didn't realize that, but I think it, those are lightning bolts, those jagged um, Z-like shapes. And the, um, the King of Wands is really, and, and so the, I, I think of suddenness when I see lightning bolts. Um, I I think of the person who it's almost like a revelation where you realize that you are sovereign. If you, so just, um, spiritual awakening, you know, people have said in the last few years, oh yeah, in 2020, I had my awakening or in 2012 or whatever, that's when I had my awakening. And it's kind of like a eureka moment. So we could, but what does awakening mean? Ultimately, Awakening to me means that we realize that we have our own thoughts and our own way of living. We've been kind of indoctrinated by the matrix, the outer world, to think that we should want this and that. And then we're like, no, I don't want those things. And we reject those things. And we feel like we are um, free to be ourselves, our true selves. So anything like that. Um, sovereignty is about self-reliance. I would say it's the divine masculine, as far as I'm concerned, which is one of the cards that I got. Let me read that card just since I've already brought this up. Uh, the frequency of divine masculine supports our strong, focused, and active side, allowing it to express itself while helping us to bring our dreams and ideas into form with kindness and wisdom. Oh, it's interesting that it's 22 because 22 is a master number. I'm, I was going to say, I'm not, I, I don't know if they planned it to be like that, but you know, chances are that they did. And it's a bill, it's a uh, master builder. And you know, you're not supposed to reduce master numbers, um, but it would reduce to a four if you did, which is the number of um, Saturn and stability and structure and discipline and order and things like that. And um, the interesting thing too, when I said order was, uh, is that the emperor, so I got the empress, but the emperor is uh, also connected to Aries in addition to the magician. Um, so hmm, it's almost like getting the emperor and the empress you could look at as the divine feminine. So here I got the divine masculine, the divine feminine, which the, the divine feminine is magnetic as opposed to electric. Um, so it is more receptive and drawing to itself. 
So we need both of those things. So I got that in this reading and that's balance. I mean, when you look at it, um, but see the, the divine, uh, the masculine energy has been degraded uh, by people that wanted to kind of, you could say hijack it and, and to weaken that. It has nothing to do with gender. It has to do with um, how we project energy. So when we're projecting it out in the world and it, you know, when you have ruthless ambition and uh, things like that, that's toxic masculinity for sure. Competition, um, unless it's done in a way where the person isn't being cutthroat, they're just simply enjoying that, that a challenge, if you will. But this is about uh, feeling a sense of power within one's life, not feeling controlled by the outer world. Obviously we can't control everything. So nobody is suggesting that, oh yeah, you know, this means that we can control everything. All right. I have the world. The world is the last card of the major arcana. It's a card of completion of, you know, in the, um, Rider weight deck, they show, a woman, which I thought they were batons, but apparently they're diplomas. It's like graduation day. It's like, okay, that, that phase is done. And if we look at everything in the, in, on earth as lessons or school, then that goes along with that. So this idea of um, there's some cycle that is completing itself. And we know that there is something afoot. Even if you don't know it intellectually, you might know it energetically, that there is like the old guard is falling away. The magician. Um, this to me is a major arcana version of the father of wands or the king of wands. This is the um, conscious co-creator, meaning that we are, you know, like, and I, I'm not saying this, uh, I'm saying this as an example. I'm not saying that this has to be true literally for every person, but a lot of people will say, yeah, I'm applying for a job or I'm going out and I'm going to try to, you know, apply for a job. And, um, they never, they would never think of like, I'm going to create my own job because they have been programmed to think that that's the only thing that they can do. And I totally get it because I was that way myself. And my partner said to me, why don't you hire yourself? And when he said that, because I, I didn't have a vision, an idea, and I had no intention of doing something like that. I, I received that in an irritating way because it just wasn't where I was at. And then fast forward a few years, I don't remember when he said that, but then it all started to make sense. But it, it, it really doesn't, it doesn't matter uh, because no matter if we're working for ourselves or working for somebody else, we're still working for somebody else because we're serving others. So Anybody who thinks, oh, I have my own job and I'm doing my own thing, you're still serving somebody else. Um, hopefully you're not just self-serving, but you're actually serving somebody else. The point is, though, that we, we don't feel like a slave. We feel like a master. And that is an important distinction. And also, if we don't like our reality, we feel that we have some ability to change it. Maybe not instantaneously, but that we can uh, do certain things to make it happen. And so I really feel like that top row that is describing this, the energy of this eclipse is very, um, empowering, but really emphasizing self empowerment above all else. So let's look at some of the um, lessons to be learned. We do have three out of the four cards um, reversed. Sometimes reversed cards can actually be, 
more positive than the upright cards. But in this particular case, um, I it, it it really isn't about oh is this positive is is this uh, challenging or anything like that. But it is interesting. First of all, we have that Mercury retrograde. So things are, I think what this really means is that the, the shakeout, the fallout, the result of what this eclipse means will maybe have a delayed effect because it's during a Mercury retrograde. So we're going to need to integrate the lessons. Okay, so the first card I got, I'm going to hold it upright, but it was reversed, is the chariot in reverse. This is an out of control energy. It's actually connected to the sign of cancer, if that's meaningful for anyone. But it's really, um, you know, in the upright position, it means being in control. And in the reverse position, it means things are out of control. Now, um, the, the thing is, what is happening is that I said the old guard is falling and because they're losing power when i said the when i say the old guard sometimes they're called the the archons and and there are other names for them that mean those people who have been controlling us for eons controlling the resources controlling you know the outer structure of the world that's what pluto and capricorn was all about interestingly we have one more bout of Pluto in Capricorn that will extend, that will begin in the fall of 2024 and extend through the U.S. election. Um, and that is, I feel that that is highly, highly significant that uh, Pluto goes back in, um, I mean, it's it, it, it will have been direct, but it will still be in Capricorn at that time. And then exactly two weeks later, it goes back into Aquarius for good for 20 years which, you know, we talk about the, the, the age of Aquarius, the dawning of the age of Aquarius, which is a populist kind of a vibe. So that, I, I feel that that is highly significant, but there is this out of control feeling that will probably ratchet up. And this being the Aries uh, season that can be very volatile, we should uh, brace ourselves for something like that. And what we can take from this as a lesson is that even if the outer world is, you know, uh, going figuratively to hell in a handbasket, we do not have to follow suit. We can take um, the higher ground. We can um, be, be in our uh, peace at all times never allow anything to escalate, understand that people may be uh, very, um, what's the term, like uh, keyed up. And also, you know, some people follow the Schumann resonance and, and the, the, the activity of the sun, and that can influence people as well. So just be aware of these things and, and, and don't like get sucked into that chaotic nature that the, the chariot in reverse represents. Now we have the sun in, in reverse. Now the sun is one of those cards, you know, arguably the most positive card in the deck, that when it's reversed, um, in one of my tarot books, it means partial success. This only means that, um, I feel it means that what just came into my mind was, um, to be continued, uh, meaning that the all of the promise of what the sun means in the upright position, I think I, I held it uh, reversed. Not that it's really much different uh, upside down, but just if you look at that, just the vibrancy of what the sun is. The sun in the upright position means love, prosperity, joy, um, children, or you could say like the creativity and the innocence of children, but you know, people who want children, you know, and things like that. Um, I said, uh, healing, uh, just everything, success. And actually the, the, the chariot card can mean success too in the upright position. So if we feel at this time that there's so much happening and it feels like it's in flux. Everything is in flux. 
understand that things are being stirred up because of this massive change. It's not going to be like this forever. So if you feel like you're on the edge of your seat, understand that this is temporary. This too shall pass. And the promise of the sun, I feel, is ours. Maybe at the time, you know, another thing that just popped up was Leo season because the sun rules Leo. So maybe that's when we can kind of... Um, you know, gather the harvest and experience some of those things. But who knows? I mean, you know, this is going to be a year to remember for sure. So we have to just, um, you know, stay, at, you know, above the fray and, and be as, um, cultivate peace any way we can, any way we can. Um, whether, you know, meditation is a no brainer, let's face it. We have to do everything we can. Um, the fool card. And I was going to say, and I didn't, you know, it's so funny because I didn't know that I had picked this card or I didn't remember. I was, when I was talking about the magician and I said, oh my gosh, you know, um, I, I, that's, that's Aries. Well, I always think of the fool as Aries because it's, um, what do you call it? Um, it, you know, April fool's day happens during, during Aries season. And by the way, at the time of this eclipse, I think there's at least four planets that are involved. Chiron, which is an asteroid, not a planet, but that is, um, that's going to be in exact conjunction with this solar eclipse. So it really is a catalyst for healing. And healing is such a broad word, you know, depending on what's going on in your life, that, you know, it can run the gamut. Maybe it's financial abundance. You know, I really feel that this could be a, uh, a turning point for some people who have been struggling financially. Um, and it may come... Maybe you have an idea and the magician helps you. Um, you know, when I started my business here, it was something that was totally sudden, kind of like that lightning bolt that the, the, the King of Wands depicts that I never, ever in a million years, even as much as I loved astrology, never thought I would do. These things can happen and change your life in a moment. I'm living proof of that. And so um, with the fool, this is zero point. So this is what we have to learn. This bottom roll is what are the lessons that we have to learn. When we're at that zero point, it means that we have the power. Remember, this is a new, this is a powerful new moon. So this is about setting intentions as volatile as this time is, where it may seem, you know, absurd to set intentions, uh, because you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Do it anyway, because, um, even with the mercury retrograde, maybe it's something that will happen down the line. And that, but I heard some, I heard some other like spiritual teacher or whatever it was. I don't know if it was an astrologer. I think it was a spiritual teacher who said that, in, um, manifestations, uh, can be, uh, instantaneous at this time. So that to me, the magician, it's like being this, you know, living in this magical time when you can create something out of nothing, you know, the fool, but you have to have faith that the invisible can become visible for that to happen. And then we have the two of uh, cups in reverse. And so, um, I think I, I I'm going to just put this here in terms of relationships, because this card is totally, you know, that's water energy. And in the upright position, this is about, uh, commitment. So the, the, when it's in the upright position, it's all about being open to commitment. But when it is reversed, it's like a broken commitment. 
However, how I see it is that the soul contracts, the karmic relationships that we may have found ourselves in are allowed to be broken. This is so important because obviously the relationships in our lives are the most significant. Sometimes they can be some of the most challenging, some of the most difficult to navigate and, you know, toxic. And I feel like this is a time, and that may be part of that healing from Chiron, where it really is about our sovereignty, you know, when it comes to relationships as well, not just in terms of um, other things in life, but our relationships, where we don't feel like we have to be in a certain situation. Um, and this can allow more freedom, um, not having to be, um, subjected to people, or maybe it's a specific person that you don't want to be. And, and yet that you feel compelled to be with for some reason. So it's really, and you know, it's interesting too, because the Empress is about love, but I would say like true love. Okay. So sometimes there's this sense of obligation with, um, relationships that is very oppressive. So the transition card, this was the second sacred geometry card that I got is talking about the frequency of transition that supports our deep understanding of the ever-changing nature of existence in our lives so that we can learn to let go, surrender to the process, and allow transition to occur with ease and grace. That's, yeah, that's a big one. Surrender. You know, um, sometimes I'm, I'm sure this is just very universal with human nature. It's easy when things feel out of control to become like a micromanager and to, you know, get triggered into wanting to control as much as you can. What if you just surrendered to the chaos? That doesn't mean that you become chaotic, but you surrender to needing to make it be other than what it is. I feel as though people who do that are going to, um, you know, transcend this period of time, or, or actually we could say, um, graduate as the world card, you know, graduate from this, uh, final lesson of the old paradigm a lot more gracefully than those who, you know, are white knuckling it and trying to hold on for dear life. All right. That's what I have for you. I hope that this resonated and I hope that you will, you know, find the healing that you you want from the solar eclipse on the 8th or 9th in Aries. Take care. Bye.